This is the only reasoning model that you can download and use it without having to pay for anybody. So this is a model from China, Alibaba, QVQ. I think it's pronounced quick. This is a 72 billion parameter model, but unlike any other model that you have got, this is the first fully open weight. I mean, like with Apache 2.0 license, reasoning model. We have got a bunch of reasoning models like O1 from OpenAI, O3 from OpenAI, recently very popular. And we have got Gemini 2.0 thinking model. We have got a couple of these reasoning models or thinking models that does something called test time scaling during the time of inference. But probably the first model, if I could be wrong, that is available with a permissive license, which means you can download the model, you can fine tune the model, you can do anything that you want and still able to use the model without having to pay anybody. This is the model that was just launched a few hours back. And in this video, I'm going to tell you everything that I know about this model. And we're going to put the model through a couple of tests and then see how good the model is. First of all, this is called QVQ. It's uh, from Quinn. This is an Alibaba company available on Hugging Face, Model Scope, Kaggle. Um, I didn't know that people started uploading model on Kaggle. So model is available on all these platforms. It is a 72 billion parameter model from what I know. So you can go here and then see it's a 72 billion parameter model. One thing that is quite fascinating about this quick model is that it is also available for visual reasoning. So this is a model that accepts two inputs. One is text. The second one is input images. So it is a really good for visual reasoning. There are a bunch of limitations that they've mentioned. One is of course, um, any, I think this was a case with another Chinese model. I don't remember exactly what, but during the course of reasoning, sometimes the model might switch from English to Chinese given the heavy composition of Chinese language in the training data set. The model might also get into recursive reasoning, which means I'll show you an example how it goes. It just goes back and forth and tries to solve a problem. And then there are like regular items. The main thing here is that the model is really, really good. According to the benchmarks, if you take four benchmarks that they've shared MMMU, this is the MMLU equivalent for the multimodality. So for vision primarily. So for MMMU, Massive Multilingual uh, Multimodal Understanding, I guess, if you compare it with GPT-4.0, Claude 3.5, Sonnet, OpenAI, O1, and an improvement from previous Quen 2 VL, this model has scored 70 points, which is below OpenAI O1, but quite an amazing number. In fact, on par with Claude 3.5, Sonnet. This also makes me wonder that what has Anthropic done with Claude 3.5, Sonnet, I mean, it's quite magical to be honest. Like we have got reasoning models, we have got latest models, but nothing seems to beat the vibe of what Claude 3.5 Sonnet can do. I mean, I'm not saying this is AGI or like it's solving RKGA, but the model seems to be solid, like really solid. I don't know what is the recipe or secret behind it, but Anthropic has done really good with Claude 3.5 Sonnet. But if you see the other benchmarks like Math Vista for math problems, the quick model has scored 71.4, which is much better than a Claude 3.5 Sonnet and the previous version of Quen 2 VL 72 billion parameter model. Math Vision once again on par with Claude 3.5 Sonnet and Olympiad Bench, this has scored 20.4, where GPT-4 has scored 25. This has been my concern with uh, the reasoning models or the thinking models. They seem to be really good at certain set of problems, but sometimes they seem to be extremely bad. So it's very hard to figure out what is the use case where these models are particularly good at. But this model, um, they've given a couple of examples where the model has done extremely well. One is a math problem. So they've given the table and then said given H of X is equal to F of X into G of X. What is find H this apostrophe to? I forgot what is it? Is it like um, the complement thing? Um, if it is in the set theory, you have to go outside. Not sure what is it? So using the table below, and they've got the next problem, which is like the graphical problem, visual reasoning. And there is this nice, um, interesting, you've given the sofa and then asked for the volume and uh, some Chinese problems as well. So according to them, the model does all these things pretty good. So if you were to use the model, the, uh, the quantized version is not yet available at the time of this recording, but you can go to Hugging Faces Model Hub and you can see the model is already available with the information about what is it and how you can use it. I am going to wait for a day or two or the quantization model, but if that does not come, I would probably run on the run pod or somewhere and then try to put together a tutorial for all of you to use it easily. If you were to use the model, 
Now, the model, like I said, comes with a permissive Apache 2.0 license, which is quite good given uh, that this is the first thinking model, probably, I guess, coming with this license. Like literally today, if you go to Hugging Face, you can just like literally go download the model. There is no waiting list, no form for you to fill. None, none of those shenanigans. Just go there, download the model. Model is available. Now, in terms of the model performance, I kind of have a mixed review, I would say. So, for example, I got this problem from internet where somebody said Gemini 2.0 Flash solve this problem. O1 Pro solve this problem. But when I gave this problem, this is um, it's it's from an Indian um, engineering entrance exam, uh, like how you have got sat in the US. Very similar, like India has got something called JEE, Joint Entrance Exam, IIT JEE. So this is a problem that was given in there. And if you see this model, this model does a pretty good job trying to understand what is happening, trying to understand, solve the problem. But as it went through the problem and as it is trying to solve the problem, and you can see at one point it comes up with the conclusion that the answer is n is equal to minus six, which is a wrong answer. But what I like about this model is the moment it got n is equal to minus six, it said, okay, but a negative value for n doesn't make any physical sense in this context because n is supposed to be a represent, uh, n is supposed to represent a distance ratio, which should be ideally a positive. So the model immediately realized that whatever it calculated, negative value is theoretically not possible or physically in this case, not possible. So it should revise it. So it goes back and then tries to revise it. And once again, it uh, kind of uh, hits the same place, minus six. It says my approach is flawed. It tries to revive the approach goes back and again, again, it gets minus six and then it says something, I'm missing something crucial, it goes back, it doesn't solve the problem. Finally, it gives me an answer of four, which is wrong. Even that four is like just literally after it got n is equal to minus six, so like randomly through a number. I mean, it doesn't solve the problem here, but I, I kind of like where the model is going and how the model is behaving. And it seems like with more training data, the model could probably beat or be on par with all these, um, all these, uh, the proprietary models like O and O3, O2 doesn't exist because of copyrights, but O3. And also it would be interesting to see what kind of the thinking time or the reasoning time and what kind of conditions that they've given. And one thing, if we have seen with O3, the more time that you let the model think, the model would do better. So that could be the case. I give a very simpler problem next. Um, this is a Pythagoras theorem. You've got a triangle, you've got four centimeters, three centimeters, and you have to figure out what is the C value. So which technically is, I think is equal to root square of four square plus three square, which is four square is 16, 16 plus nine is 25, 25 root square root is five. So technically the answer should be five. And it is a pretty good job of explaining what is the problem here. So I've got this right angle triangle problem. And then it says, I've got to use, um, use Pythagoras theorem. Yeah, this is called the Pythagoras theorem. And then it says the square length of uh, hypotenuse. And it gives a pretty detailed explanation. This is pretty good. It's tested with the new question that uh, we have not seen before. So I've got a probability question and I want to see if the model can do a pretty good job of figuring out what is the right answer. So I'm going to take this question, the probability of selecting integers a, a subset of this, and I'm going to give this. I, I'm giving this um, because it, I mean, technically it should be easier for us to figure out the answer. So I'm going to save the screenshot, go here and um, go back to my preview window, drag and drop this, but it simply says solve this. So I've just given this and if you go see the answers, let's see the answer. Okay. The second answer is two by nine. So that is the answer. This is how you solve it. Let's go see what is it doing. So I've got this probability program problem here. I need to find the probability of selecting integers from this range. And then it, it, it goes on and on. And, um, I don't have hope that it might solve it correctly. Oh yeah, it did. But I don't know. Okay. It is in fact, it is in fact verifying. Okay. So first of all, it's a two by nine. Looking back, the options two by nine is one of them. So I think this answer is correct, but let me double check to make sure I didn't miss anything. First, I derived a square plus 13 a minus 48 less than zero, which led to minus 16. 
less than a less than three that seems correct and then it solved it honestly like the way it started i mean the so many equations that they're solving i didn't think that it would solve this but it does it did a pretty good job of solving this i'm still trying to figure out like what is the what all the cases where you would need a visual reasoning model not just an llm that can answer you visual questions but i think quite excited that uh, we have got an open open i don't know i'm not even sure these days what should i call open source what should i call open weights but for now because this is apache 2.0 we can say an open source model that comes from china from alibaba quen quick 72 billion very happy this model exists i cannot wait to create more tutorials around this and i hope this can one day challenge the proprietary reasoning or thinking models that we have been getting let me know what you think about it see you in another video happy prompting